Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we look forward to sharing with you all some interesting and exciting updates that we've made for the Contact Pro Omnichannel Suite. And with that, we, um, we're going to kind of jump in, but we do hope that everybody is faring well through this coronavirus, coronavirus um, pandemic. Um, with me here today is Stefan Dons, one of our senior solution architects, and he's going to take the take the control for the middle part of today's session to kind of take take you through a demo of some of the newer features that we've added um, but i have a little bit of content before we we begin um, my name is duke bond i'm the director of sales for cct here in the u.s and canada um, today you know we're going to because we have a mixed audience some who maybe aren't really familiar with contact pro we're going to spend just a few minutes giving a little bit of background and a little bit of introduction to Contact Pro Omnichannel. And then we're going to do a quick review of the 5.3 features that were added. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna pass the um, presenter rights over to Stefan for him to take you through a demonstration of some of those new features. And then we're gonna wrap up with just a little bit of um, information, including just in case people are wondering, um, you know, what we're able to support from a work from home perspective. That obviously is a, a topic many people are looking at doing these days and we support pretty much all of the available options for Avaya in terms of, you know, work remote, working remotely, whether it's teleworker or SIP. So we're gonna go through some of those options just so you understand what we support. And then just give a brief glimpse of what we've, what we're working on for the next release of Contact Pro. If there are questions as we go throughout, you can submit questions into the um, into the GoToWebinar panel, and we'll try to get answers back out to you as quickly as possible. As I mentioned, you know we've got a mixed audience here. Some some of you might not really be that familiar with Contact Pro, but just wanted to spend a minute when we when we talk about omni-channel, really a big piece of it is really the fusion of CRM integration and multi-channel together. You know, CRM integration, a lot of people think of screen pop for a voice call. Well, now you need to do a screen pop for email, chat, SMS, Facebook Messenger, any kind of customer interaction, you want to do a screen pop to drive that um, information to the agent to make them more efficient. The other parts of CRM integration might be things like a journey map record trying to log every interaction, not just voice interactions, but email, chat, SMS. I want all of that information pushed back into the CRM so that I can do some analytics inside my CRM to, to look and see you know, who are my customers that are contacting me and maybe identify who, who are the customers that are valuable that haven't contacted me that might be utilized as a way to do an outreach kind of campaign. So that, that fusion of the CRM and multi-channel together is really what we look at as being our omni-channel focus and emphasis. And multi-channel includes outbound. You know, it could be callbacks, it could be outbound campaigns, it could be, you know, outbound voice campaigns, it can be outbound SMS campaigns. That's really what we're looking at when we talk about multi-channel. It's not just, you know, inbound customer interactions, it's also proactive outreach kinds of things, which we do have an integration with the Avaya Proactive Outreach Manager. Our focus is on the, the, the Avaya Call Center Elite infrastructure and that, that, that customer base. You know, we have the integration with Communications Manager, Session Manager, CMS, a lot of the other components that live in that Avaya Call Center Elite world. Um, and you know, Avaya, recognizing the value that we're adding to their to their customer base you know, we've we've received multiple awards from avaya most recently we were their innovation global partner of the year last year moving on to take a brief look at 5.3 um, so that again i don't monopolize all the time and and don't leave stefan enough time for a demonstration which tends to be a, a problem that i sometimes have so i i will try my best to to not do that today the you know one of the features that we've added here is an ability for organizations that are doing email customer interactions but they do it from a team-based perspective one of the challenges that some of these organizations have is that 
a lot of times people will carbon copy others on a reply and then those people that are carbon copied they'll add some input by replying back to a broad group and what ends up happening with most email management kind of systems is that that new reply because it's coming from a new person not the original person who submitted the first email it looks like a new email and so you need a way to be able to go in and search or you know find the other interactions that are on that same email thread so this group or associated email handling capability that we have really is really designed for those teams of agents that all work together and where there's multiple people replying and you want to be able to still see the full dialogue as one cohesive thread. It also allows one party to close out an email that is maybe just a duplicate of another one. Um, we've also recently enhanced the email handling um, capabilities from an imaging and printing perspective. Um, so again, you know, one aspect of the omni-channel suite is definitely email customer interactions. So what you'll see in 5.3 here is there's a wide range of features that are have been enhanced and they cover the spectrum from email to the chat world to the outbound world and then also some infrastructure kind of, kinds of things. So we really have kind of a broad spectrum of new capabilities that's not just focused on one area but the first two are definitely as you see here focused around email from an inbound voice queue perspective sometimes organizations have unique scenarios where a particular customer case scenario may require a team to be able to see and again the call picking from a voice queue perspective is something that i've typically seen where it's like small teams and i want to allow the agents to maybe kind of cherry pick from a queue of you know a couple of people because they know that oh that's someone that I spoke with just a little while ago or I spoke with yesterday let me let me take that call because I best know what they're actually probably wanting to speak with us about so we have a breeze snap in capability that allows a call to be put over into a separate kind of queue so with our call picking from voice queue the the caller is no no longer sitting in the call center elite ACD queue you know, you've identified the scenario, whether it's from the dialed number itself or for one reason or another, you're putting them over into a different kind of queue. And that queue is going to be managed by our Breeze Snap-in application. And then the agents have a visual, you know, a visual display of what is in, you know, what contacts are waiting in that queue. And then they can pick from that queue. So Stefan will show that to you today. Um, it's a nice feature. Again, it's something that's unique to very specific customer and you know customer situations pretty much all of the development that we do we do it's it's customer driven there are real life customer scenarios out there that are asking us to build these capabilities and we build these things with the you know from the perspective that we're going to build them and make them part of the product um, so that you know you're not managing a, a one-off kind of feature as part of this release we went through a pretty major redesign of the user interface for our Contact Pro administration portal. And Stefan will give you a, a quick glimpse of that. It just makes it easier to, to move around and, and find the information that you're looking for. We have developed a Salesforce software. While we've been able to do Salesforce integration for a long time, that integration was buried inside of Contact Pro or managed as a separate browser where a caller comes in and we push open a browser tab to the proper contact record inside of Salesforce. With this enhancement, we actually have a soft phone module, kind of like a plugin that lives inside of Salesforce. And so Stefan will, I think, show that to you today. Um, another nice capability that we've added recently, and this one kind of helps us to, to kind of complete our parity with Avaya's EMC platform. EMC had one capability that we hadn't had previously, and that was the database routing capability from an adjunct route from a vector. So we now have the ability to take that adjunct route from a vector, apply database rules and scripting logic, and then send a, a route result, a route response back to the vector on how to, how to route that call. And that could be longest available agent. It could be, oh, this is a premier customer, put them into the premier, into the premier queue, or this is a special scenario where, hey, put them over into that call picking queue. So there's any number of scenarios where, you know, you might want to look at additional information to figure out how I want to route that caller. And then we send that route response back to the vector that sent the adjunct route initially. 
In this release, we've continued to evolve our ability to support chatbots. So we've, we've had the ability for um, chatbot interaction through our partner Cognigy, and we have had the ability to transfer customer interactions out of a chatbot to a live agent. We've now built the ability to be able to take the full context from that chatbot and pass it over to the agent so that the agent has the full context, the full context and awareness of what has happened with this customer interaction prior to it being transferred to the live agent. I find this analogous to when you go into an IVR and the caller presses zero and they transfer out to get to a live agent. The caller is expecting all of the information that they've provided to be passed through to that live agent so that the live agent doesn't have to start over and ask, ask for information that's already been provided. So it's, it's an analogous scenario as that. It's just you know, a chat bot is a different form of self-service than a voice response unit or an IBR. Um, so that's a nice, you know, a nice capability enhancement around the ability to support chat bots. We've also recently added WhatsApp messaging as another messaging type of interaction channel. So whether it is a traditional web chat or whether it is an SMS interaction or whether it's a Facebook messenger interaction or a Twitter direct messaging interaction, or now a WhatsApp messaging interaction, those interactions are going to be routed through our same queuing subsystem and then they're going to be presented to agents in the same manner. So the agent is going to see any of these kinds of messaging interactions presented to it, you know, presented to the agent in its desktop in the same manner. It's gonna, it's gonna look the same. The only difference is, is that that interaction is coming through a different queue. So we have we have built the the ability to be able to support WhatsApp as a messaging routing and um, handling scenario, much like we have again SMS and Facebook Messenger and Twitter direct messaging already. A minor enhancement in the Palm support that we have added recently to support an enhancement into Palm. Palm previously didn't have the ability to drop an external conferenced party. Um, so they've added some capabilities into Palm, and with that, we now support that capability. It, it, you know, it allows an organization, if they need to conference in external parties, to to be able to basically pass that call off to that third party, which is what a lot of organizations do. They might start the, you know, start the or, the the interaction internally, and then they might engage a third party, but then they want to completely hand it over to that third party. And that's something that previously couldn't be done due to a limitation in Palm. Now that Palm doesn't have that limitation, we're able to, you know, adhere to that. Once they added some new API capabilities for us to develop to, we can now, you know, support that new Palm feature. We've we've extended our our preview dialing callback capability to now be able to do it not just from the web, but also an inbound voice call. An inbound voice call could go to an experience portal and prompt the caller for their callback information, tell them what the expected wait time is for you know callback, and then we can put that callback request into our callback queue. Um, and that callback request could also be coming from an agent desktop. I think we've all had scenarios where we've been talking to a customer service rep, and for one reason or another, we've just run out of time or we had an emergency pop up, and we're like, hey, can you all call me back tomorrow at 3 o'clock? You know, and most of the time the call center organization is saying, oh, sorry, we don't have that capability. Well, with this callback capability from the agent desktop, the agent could just put that request in right then and there. And then at that time requested, that task gets delivered to an agent that's available to make that callback at the time that was requested. So a really nice add additional capability that we've we've put into our kind of our outbound set of solutions. Um, we also did you know, build an ability now for if I'm doing a preview outbound campaign, I can now load up that campaign instead of doing it manually where I'm uploading a list. It can be a web service where I'm dropping you know, just a record at a time um, so that we can insert records into outbound campaigns. And those outbound re you know, callback requests can be call back this person now or it can be call back you know, tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. In this release, we did enhance the Contact Pro Analytics reports a little bit. We added a few new reports, and we now have the ability to export the interaction history for workforce management. With that, um, that's kind of you know a nutshell. There are some other little minor things that we did in this release that aren't 
you know, didn't make it onto this list here, but with this, I want to pass things over to Stefan. Um, Stefan, I'm going to make you the presenter and now Stefan's going to take us through a demo of many of these capabilities. I, I think you've assigned the wrong person. <laughs> Yeah, I think you just gave it to me. It's asking me to show my screen. Yeah. <laughs> close it. There you go. I just closed it. You should be fine. Why isn't it letting me choose? Okay, Stefan, you are the presenter. Yep. I'm not sure okay. why it kept clicking on it and it just wouldn't give me the option to. Anyway, I got it, thanks. Okay, so. Okay, cool. I'm gonna start my presentation um, with some new options that you can use with CP Omni 5.3 to get a more compact and a more thin way to use Contact Pro as a uh, soft phone. So, like you can see on my screen, uh, we've introduced uh, the so-called app bar mode, which gives you a just a thin toolbar with all the features, modules, and buttons a in a voice-only or an outbound agent would need to handle uh, to make his job to handle his calls. So we do have um, the agent status control. The agent will have his call control button. So the soft phone, whether it's integrated or using a hot phone in the background. Um, we do have a integrated compact um, um, wallboard showing the most important data, like how many agents are available, longest waiting time, etc. And we can also, of course, <clears throat> activate features that we do have in the full screen client, like a speed dial integration or phone book integration. And with this thin toolbar, we can save a lot of space on the agent's desktop. Um, where the rest can be used for CRM applications or other applications like Salesforce in this case. So they've got a very thin toolbar at the top of the screen for call and agent control and can use Salesforce or other applications here. Another integration that we've done is the Salesforce web-based soft phone. So within the Salesforce screen, we have integrated our own soft phone um, which gives you the ability to control your agent state just within the uh, web-based CRM interface. Um, and you can use it for handling inbound as well as outbound calls, including the caller identification against um, Salesforce contact data. So if I'm like, going to call this agent right now, it's it's going to show up the alerting call and it's identifying the caller in real time against the, the Salesforce contact data. And of course, the other way around, I can use the Salesforce data to initiate calls by searching for contact details out of Salesforce. Just click, uh, use the click to dial uh, capability in here. So um, that's one thing that I wanted to start with. Now I'm going to show you a couple of the modules and features that we've introduced in 5.3 and Duke was already talking about in his PowerPoint. And I just deactivate the app bar for now and gonna start with the email grouping feature. As Duke has already mentioned, uh, we have now introduced the possibility to um, list or to give an agent a view of related email contacts that are not only coming from the same um, sender, but will show the whole conversation. 
like in this case, my agent is now handling an email that was sent by Duke, and it's a longer conversation string with a couple of um, senders and recipients. And <clears throat> with the new email grouping feature, I'm able to give the agent a list of related contacts, like we can see in the email grouping list here. Um, we've got this um, email from Duke Active right now, but we can also see some related emails um, that was initially sent by a customer, then one of the agents replied back, and then there is another reply, and then Duke is, did also came in and, and was part of the email conversation. And with this email grouping, I'm now able to close related contacts that are still in queue, or I can also choose close the whole conversation. And with that, um, I don't have to go through all of those still waiting emails in queue, but I'm able to close the whole conversation. <clears throat> Before we did that only on um, customer base, so the customer journey did list uh, all contacts based on a customer's email address, but, it, but now it's also based on conversation uh, using the subject. Now, an, another um, another um, in, a new feature Duke already mentioned was is the um, call picker. So as you can see down here, I'm, I do have the call picker module active and I'm now getting one call after another um, that's shown in my um, call picking list. And my agent has now the ability to um, check this list and, and see who's actually waiting in the queue. And I can see, okay, oh, there's uh, actually Stefan Dunst waiting in queue. And I know, and I remember I've talked to this customer before, so I'm now able to pick this specific call out of the queue, even so it might not be the one that's um, that would be next in queue. So what I can do here is I can go ahead um, and just right click the contact and pick the call, and then it will be assigned to my direct agent. And I can talk to this customer directly. And at this point, the call won't be in, in the um, call picker list anymore. But it's the call picking. Uh, as Duke already mentioned, we are using a brief snap-in um, integration here to um, pick these calls, even though they are not waiting in a real Avaya CM queue. Um, so one of the reasons we are we have introduced this is uh, it's a kind of an option to do um, last agent uh, routing. It's not in this case it's not really last agent routing, but uh, making agents able to pick a call because um, they have already talked to to this specific customer before. Another option to how to do uh, this last agent routing will be the adjunct routing feature that we've introduced in CP Omni 5.3. Um, so as Duke mentioned, we are now able to use the adjunct um, feature that's used in VDNs and vectors, and the Contact Pro routing engine is able to listen to specific VDNs that are doing adjunct route um, events. And with that, we are able to um, make uh, routing decisions or um, performing last agent routing, or we can create callback items out of the queue to do callbacks, uh, to create callbacks out of the queue. For example, if the, if the expected wait time is too high or if no agents are available, you can um, offer a callback and via adjunct, it will create an outbound um, wake item using this adjunct route feature. Or you can do other routing decisions, make other routing decisions, um, you can do custom identification. And this interface here can be used to create your own um, workflow, your own scripts to, for example, do a custom identification first. So we can query against any type of database. We also, in, in one of the next minor releases, will add uh, the possibility to query against a web service instead of a database. And um, with this, we can get any, we can use any type of data like the customer's telephone number, the ANI, 
query against the customer database um, to identify the customer and use the customer number, um, put it into UUI or forward it to third party applications. Um, as a next step, you can um, perform last agent routing. So you can check if this customer was talking to a specific agent before. And if so, we can check if this agent is available. And if, if yes, then we can just send this call directly to this agent. Um, as we actually already in the Contact Pro Manager here, I can uh, quickly talk about the updated look and feel. Um, for those of you who are, who are already using CP Omni and CP Manager, um, the look and feel that have changed. So we, we changed to a changed to a modern look and feel to clean look and feel. Um, it, it does have all the model, uh, modern features that a web interface should have. And with that, you're also able to use the CP manager on your mobile device if you want to. And it does include uh, all the features that we've introduced before, but just in a more modern way. Um, next one I would like to show, and uh, Duke also already mentioned, is some updates in CP Analytics. Uh, CP Analytics, for those who are not using it yet, is a web-based um, reporting engine that uh, which does combine the voice data that we can get out of the OVI environment uh, from CMS and CM, um, plus um, all the omni-channel data that we are um, creating with with Contact Pro Omni and Contact Pro Router. Um, so Contact Pro Analytics does give you a real-time as well as historical reporting. So it does include a dashboard and a lot of historical reports based on queue level, agent level, group level, and, and also the ability to create custom reports. And um, you can create and start or using this, these uh, standard reports based on interval level, day, daily, weekly, and monthly. And I've just opened um, one of this uh, one of the reports uh, to sh just show you. This is a report, a monthly report for my demo agent Stefan Dance, which shows the number of contacts that I've handled in email, web chat, and voice channel. So it does give you one view, one report for all the channels, voice as well as omni-channel, <clears throat> and does have a lot of standard um, items in here. So uh, the typical ones like total delivered, established, and uh, some percentage values, but also the times um, coming from the channels. And you can use the default columns, the default values, but you can also choose and, and unselect columns that you don't want to see in your report uh, with this so-called column picker which makes your report more compact, as you can see in the background. And then you've got a more compact report and you can report, uh, export it manually into Excel, CSV, or PDF. Or you can use the uh, report scheduler that we've introduced as well. And with that, you can create a scheduled task to um, send this report um, on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis by email or put it somewhere as a file. And with this, you can create tasks to send your manage management report every morning at 7 a.m. automatically. Um, because of this uh, report scheduler, we of course do also support the uh, connectors to WFO, WFM systems. So on a scheduled base, it will export the data into CSV files or just push it to our uh, external database. Coming back to Contact Pro Omni, um, we have introduced some um, changes in the outbound module. So, like, um, I'm all I've been always able to blend in or blend out to different channels, but with these with the outbound. Uh, what I'm going to show you right now is um, we've introduced a, a possibility to create callbacks. So, for example, if you got an inbound call 
and um, you're talking about uh, some some uh, more complex issue with the customer and at some point the customer has no more time or if you your agents are handling outbound calls on a campaign base and the customer has no time at this moment we can give the agent the ability to create a callback like in this case my customer has no time to talk and I can choose callback requested um, to get this kind of view from an agent perspective. And I can just um, schedule a callback, a specific time, a date and time, and I can decide whether it should go back to a outbound queue or whether this customer wants to talk to me directly. And I can leave some notes here. And then it's scheduled for same time tomorrow. We do have the same from uh, for a from a customer perspective. So on our um, website, this is a customer website, and we've here we've introduced a web scheduled callback feature. So customers can also leave. A callback request on a on a website or in a mobile device application, and you can leave your cust uh, contact details, um, your question that you've got, your number to callback, and maybe your contract number, which is uh, assigned to your contact details. You can choose a department or a queue if you want to, and all of this can be designed from a um, callback manager in your uh, contact center. You can choose a date um, and time using this column, uh, this date and time picker. And we do have the ability to check for available slots in real time. Meaning uh, if you're gonna start with callbacks, you have to make sure that you've got agents available at this time. Not that, um, the customer has chosen a specific slot, but uh, you won't have agents available tomorrow at 10.45. So we can immediately, immediately let uh, the customer know, well, I, we know that uh, you would like to have a callback at a specific date and time, but unfortunately we don't have, will not have any agents available. So they can choose another date or another time. And the same here, uh, it will create an outbound work item it will be queued and at this time tomorrow, 10.45, um, it will pop or it will be assigned to an agent and this agent will get uh, this call, will get a script if you want to. And then um, you can choose whether um, the outbound solution that we that we provide um, does start the call automatically or if the agent should have the ability to start the call manually. That's configurable and very flexible. Another one that I wanna uh, show you real quick before um, we're gonna almost wrap up is the web chat. Um, so the chatbot and the contextual um, handover. So I did prepare a chatbot conversation between customer and chatbot. So on this um, customer website, a customer did start a chat conversation. You can see I did already um, went through all the steps to, to not spend too much time here. Um, the chatbot did collect a lot of data, like uh, the, the, when the trip uh, this customer would, would like to book should start and end customer information. And at some point, this customer would now like to escalate to an agent. So he can do this at the end uh, of the chatbot conversation or just in between, doesn't matter. But if it's at the end, we are able to hand over all the collected information to the agent on transfer from chatbot to agent. So at this point, the agent did get the chat. The agent did get a related CRM screen pop. This time it's Microsoft Dynamics which is configurable, by the way, based on channels, which CRM application will pop. And um, <clears throat> now we can see um, that this agent did start the chat conversation. And before 
anybody was typing anything between agent and customer, the agent would get all the information that was already collected in the chatbot conversation. This will save a lot of time um, to the agent and will also kind of be a good experience for the customer as the agent does not need to ask for the um, for this information again. Okay, let me see. Um, I did have a SMS conversation before, but it did time out as I was talking too much. So let me just start another one to show you this real quick. And this will be the section to talk about um, the SMS and social media integration. So other than SMS, we do also support um, we do we do also support social media. So um, just need to close this one. Chat as well as my agent is configured to not get too much real-time contacts at a time. Now. Um, you can see as soon as I've closed the other real-time contact, I'm now getting the SMS contact. And this SMS can be true SMS for texting, can be WhatsApp, can be Facebook Messenger, it can be a Twitter post, it can be um, Apple Business Chat. So now it's just a direct SMS connection between customer and agent, and they can just text uh, back and forth. Uh, back and forth to request some information. If it would be um, WhatsApp, we can also share inline images, texts, or uh, pictures, or um, documents. Um, same for Facebook Messenger. Okay, I think I'm already through what I did want to show you about the new features in CP Omni 5.3. I mean, there, there would be a lot more things, but um, if we would spend more time, but I think that these are the most important improvements that we've introduced in 5.3 and Duke already mentioned in his um, slides. Great, thank you, Stefan. Um, I'm gonna make myself presenter back here again. Hopefully I can manage to get it right this time so I can share my screen. Okay. Um, so a lot of good, a lot of good new stuff in 5.3 to complement the CRM integrations and the email and chat blended with voice handling that was already in place. Um, again, thank you, Stefan, for kind of giving a little bit of you know visual um, remembering of of kind of what we've added here today. Um, just a couple last topics that wanted to touch upon before we wrap up here today. Um, again, we wanted to highlight the fact that we can support those organizations that are looking to enable um, work from home. We know that in this day and age, it's you know becoming very critical for an organization to be much more resilient. So when agents are working in the office, you know, in, in, in a local office, they have the ability to do a soft phone that's running natively on the computer. Um, you know, and that, that soft phone would be registered with Avaya Session Manager. It could also be a SIP hard phone, um, but it could also be an H323 phone. <clears throat> and then another scenario sometimes is when there's multiple communication managers so that that agent needs to log in. So they would maybe use the telecommuter, telecommuter option, even though they are in an office. But, you know, from a remote perspective, what's, you know, nice is that I have the ability for the SIP soft phone to still work through the Avaya session border controller. Um, there's a remote worker capability in the in the SBC that is supported that we also support. Um, H323 soft phones, you know, we have the ability for our agent desktop 
to be a, a native H three two H three two three cell phone that is registered directly with communications manager. So that's definitely an easy option. If the organization has SIP hard phones that can register to the SBC, um, the Contact Pro work dot, you know, workspace desktop can you know, associate itself with that Avaya hard phone from a home office environment. Um, and then again, it could be the telecommuter option when I'm working from home, pointing that phone call to my home phone or to a mobile phone. When an agent logs in, the agent chooses what the voice connection for that login session is going to be. So when I'm in the office, I may choose something different than when I'm working remotely. And as I move around, I can choose different um, voice connection paths that are available. So it gives a lot of flexibility for where your, where your agents can work from. Beyond um, the 5.3 release, we've got a lot of um, development going on. Probably the most important and highest priority thing that we're working on is making our omni-channel agent desktop be a browser-based um, desktop. We'll continue to support the, the, the client, the, the, the thick client application that we support today um, because there are many capabilities and things that you can do with a thick client that you can't do in a browser. Things like keystrokes, keystroke macros, the ability to extend your desktop footprint across multiple screens. These are things that you can't really do from within a within a browser. So there are some limitations on a browser, but we realize that many organizations that that's the desired model that they want to operate in. So we're going to we're in the middle of adding that, and hopefully by the end of the year we'll have our first release of of a browser-based agent desktop. We're, you know, adding SMS outbound campaigns to complement the ability to do outbound preview dialing types of campaigns. And coupled with that is the ability to do some workflows around that SMS. So maybe it's I'm sending out an SMS message to remind you of an appointment, um, you know, tomorrow or next week. We can take that reply back from that customer and then process that through a workflow that could potentially go update your scheduling system to let them know that, yes, customer has confirmed that they're available for that appointment. So there can be a workflow process tied to this outbound campaign um, that we're, we're working on building. There are gonna be some additional stock reports that we're working on adding for Contact Pro Analytics. In addition, in, in addition to adding the enhanced call data, um, enhanced call handling data from CMS, um, Avaya has a, I can't remember the exact name of the product, but they have a product where you can do kind of a form of cradle to grave reporting, but that product is end of life. So we're basically going to build a capability to do cradle to grave reporting within Contact Pro Analytics. We already provide a lot of that reporting in Contact Pro Analytics, but we really focus upon what's happening from an agent perspective and not necessarily tracking it through the, you know, from a caller perspective. So we've got some new reporting enhancements that we're focusing on around that capability. The chatbot integration that we have today is primarily focused upon um, Cognigy, which is a partner of ours. We have done um, some integration with other chatbots, but we're going to, we're going to take that a step further and do some productization around like things like Google AI, Watts, IBM's Watson and Amazon, I think it's um, Lexi or I forget what the Amazon chatbot capabilities are, but we're going to basically adapt our solution to be able to integrate with multiple chatbots because really at the end of the day, the transfer out of a chatbot into our platform is a fairly easy process to, to handle. And so we're going to make it so that organizations can choose the chatbot platform that best fits their, their needs. And we're gonna stay focused on the live handling aspect. There's no reason for us to try to become a chatbot. It makes more sense for us to integrate with chatbots since that technology exists. Um, there's no, re no need to reinvent the wheel. In Contact Pro, Contact Pro 6.0, we'll get rid of the Microsoft SQL Server database that today is only used for configuration data. We're going to move that over into the Mongo database also so that it just simplifies our implementation footprint and reduces a little bit of the cost for installations. We're also working on enhancing our cloud platform support. While we can run Contact Pro in any one of the 
cloud providers, Amazon, Azure, Google, there are certain things that we need to do to make it a little bit more easily um, implemented and also to kind of document the the setup environment. So there's some kind of some stabilization and, and kind of more productization around our support for that. Today, it's really more kind of ad hoc, um, but we realize that a lot of organizations want to run their compute off, you know, out, outside of their own data center. We're also, you know, paying attention to the world in terms of what's happening with more and more voice services moving into the cloud. So we want to be able to adapt um, to the, you know, the cloud voice calling model, but still allowing you to capture the benefits of an omni-channel platform that marries the multi-channel and CRM integration tightly together. An example of a Twilio integration would be where a caller calls into Twilio, we instruct the Twilio platform to play a greeting play a menu of options to the caller, prompt them for an account number. Our workflow engine will then dip into a backend database, potentially telling the Twilio platform, okay, tell them what their balance is. Oh, the caller just pressed zero because they want to speak to an agent. Okay, play them this music for a few minutes while we're waiting for an agent. Now that an agent is available, Twilio now transfer that call down to this agent's you know, 10 digit dialable number. You know, so we're looking to adapt these cloud telephony providers um, kind of in a way long term to give organizations a flexibility to to integrate outside of the Avaya world if that's something that they need to do. It gives them a little bit more flexibility and resilience to to have these options available. So that's kind of the direction we're going as a company. As always, we we definitely focus our future development based upon customer and partner feedback. So we welcome input um, and requests for, you know, modifying our, our priorities. So if, if people do have ideas, definitely feel free to let us know. With that, we want to wrap up and say thank you. Um, hopefully this was a little bit helpful and to give you a sense of what's been added, kind of where we're going as a company, maybe reminding you of some capabilities that we already had in the platform. There's a lot of capabilities that we have, and it's really difficult for an organization to try to implement them all at once. So what's nice is you can take it step by step and do one, you know, one piece at a time. You don't have to go in and, and enable web chat and SMS and email and bots all at once. You can do it one step at a time, and you can prioritize that implementation plan based upon where your organization's you know, biggest pain points are and where the biggest return on your investment would be. Stefan, anything you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, I think we've touched base everything. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. And again, appreciate you taking the time to join us here today. Goodbye, all.